let's be real. The latest ChatGPT model five sucks. Let's dive into some of this. So since I've been playing around with ChatGPT five, that's now come out over the last couple of weeks, honestly, I, I'm being honest. I was really hoping for it to be substantially better than it is. However, I've consistently came up with a handful of problems and annoyances that have led us to still be using a bunch of other platforms like Anthropic, even though in a lot of ways, Anthropic isn't that great, does still with Claude for it's just so co Claude code specifically, it's just really good at development and building and doing some key things that a lot of the talk was going to be that ChatGPT5 was going to be able to do. However, this is at least my opinion. You let me know your thoughts down below. By the way, before we jump in, if you haven't already liked, subscribed, please feel free to do so. I would love to have you here I'm trying to grow this, help you guys out, give you guys updates and insights about AI automation, how to do things, how to build things, so on. Anyways, going back into this, since I've been using G ChatGPT5, the thing I've noticed the most is it's got a lot more guardrails. And essentially how I think of it in that way is it sort of feels a lot more restrictive, watered down, more general when it comes to providing context and clarity and detail. Where other models, maybe 4.0 or 04 Mini or something, it would give you a lot of more in-depth granularity, be more articulate or creative, whereas this has been a lot more high level, more general in its response, or makes more assumptions, if that makes sense. Specifically, like if I'm trying to solve a problem, while people say that it does a better job at reasoning, I don't know. I feel like I've had to do a lot more back and forth with ChatGPT5 than I would have with other models. So yeah, it's a bit annoying. Even more, the fact that OpenAI went through and just removed all of their previous models and forcing you to have to use ChatGPT5 really to me gives it the impression that the experience that they're trying to give now is going to be simply a more general version of AI where for the mass public, what they're using OpenAI for or ChatGPT for isn't stuff that's more in depth or requires more reasoning and, and detail and uh, imagination or personality or creativity. A lot of people, you know, when we are looking at their reports, a lot of people are asking really basic questions. Okay, is this is this green or yellow? Is this a water bottle? Is this good for me? Right? Like, how much coffee can I drink in a day? Like random questions you could have just asked Google for, except people are naturally asking OpenAI for, as it has access to that information, also can still do Google search. So like, I get why they've tried to simplify this for the average user. However, the lack of depth and clarity that we now are getting out of the box means you're gonna do a lot more tooling to get it what you wanted in the first place. So that's me, especially when it comes to the personality of it. Now, I don't know if you feel this way as well, but for the most part, AIs, OpenAIs, ChatGPT models overall have been overly happy or always trying to satisfy your answers. Take for example, if you ask a question, if is this good or is this bad, it will typically try to side with what you are assuming. So it is basing it off of, okay, does this person think that this is a good thing or does this person think this is a bad thing? And then it sides with all of the reasons why you should keep thinking the way that you are rather than giving you a complete bias or an unbiased answer. Hey, no, generally, if you look at it from this perspective, it probably is X or Y. However, your reasoning makes sense in this way, shape or form. However, it could be a counter argument in this way, right? Like that level of depth and clarity and true external processing is something that we're just currently missing, right? It's doing a good job of reasoning why something might make sense but it's not always giving you unbiased, unfiltered depth and clarity that you actually need to be a productive person using AI in a lot of cases, in my opinion. Um, and again, I've heard everybody mention this, but it's also the oversimplification, right? If I come in and I ask OpenAI 
about something, it's going to typically go for a very general response. So anyways, I've done enough of my rambling for a sec. The, if I look into ChatGPT 5, you have a few different things. And they did just come out with one of their legacy models. So they did allow you to just recently access 4.0, which I think is because of this series of issues when it comes to their models. However, they have an auto method, which most of you have probably experienced and are exposed to. Then you have fast and then you have thinking. To be honest, both of these things are terribly slow compared to what they were before. And in my opinion, them launching ChatGPT 5 was just them trying to do a basic catch up to some of the existing models that are out there. However, it hasn't done a good enough job to meet or exceed expectations, right? Every single time they've launched a model and have done a big launch, it has been a multiple X improvement. With all the selling, the assumption was GPT-5 was going to not just sort of be a patchwork improvement, but was gonna come out and do a ton of new things, providing a lot of extra depth and clarity and reasoning and consistency and so on and so forth. Again, maybe I'm wrong. Tell me if I am or not. Let me know down in the comments. However, I think the output of ChatGPT 5 is not that great. And instead, I would still prefer to go into the back end of OpenAI, log in, use their AI platform, and talk with the models that I want to access. Because GPT 5 is not the only model available if you access their API, but it is on their front end. And to me, I think that it has been better personally going that route. The one thing, the couple of things I will say it has been doing a little bit better is it does do a better job at long form reasoning, whereas the context window, what that means is essentially the amount of information you can give it before it starts to forget things. Say, you know, whenever you were, when you were in school and you would have to like read a page and then you'd have to like then recite that information, that is its contextual reasoning, its ability to capture a bunch of info and then recall it accurately without hallucinating, just like you would maybe forgetting a key detail and then filling it in with something that your brain believes is true when it's actually a falsification. And so it is trying to do the same thing. It's a virtual brain after all in that construct. And it's improved its ability to take in more information and then walk through that information and coming back to it. Okay, so it, I have seen that. However, the output and the time it takes for it to get to a result is substantially slower in my opinion, but it's neither here nor there. The consistency in its memory, again, sort of relies, you know, leans into that context window piece. I think it's just, just done a better job of them doing data chunking and recapturing data from what you have been giving it. So that way it can actually provide you more context and clarity. Now. A couple of things I don't think it's been doing very well either is its ability to then give you consistent outputs when you've given it a bunch of training input data. And what I mean by that is like a common thing I've been seeing people, at least on the sales and marketing side do, is that they'll go and train and give it a bunch of example inputs of maybe how they want to communicate and how they want to talk and how the brand and voice should be. And then they go, all right, great, now I need you to do it for me for this topic. It still has a lot of its own guard railing that it tries to follow. And that's my own personal opinion on how ChatGPT 5 has been. You mean like, again, there's some cool things. Uh, they're working on improving some stuff. But in my opinion, I don't think it's as nice and as fancy as they've been trying to make it be. I don't know, give me your thoughts. I'm happy to dive into some stuff, show you guys some examples. Um, the couple things I did think were pretty cool is you can connect your Gmail to this. I've actually not tried this yet. It something that it really should be good at by now is this voice piece. We're able to just simply talk with it and well, where you're simply able to talk with it because being able to communicate with it effectively and doing so in a natural way is nice. Oh, that actually is one thing I have noticed that it's done a better job at. It has done a better job at inputting your voice, you being able to just give it a bunch of voice information without it being as structured as it typically should be, as someone may recommend when you're trying to do maybe the most optimal prompting to get a quality output. 
you are able to dump in a bunch of just rambled information and it has done a better job of trying to break down and understand the context and clarity of that. Albeit, I don't think it's a 10x improvement. I think it might be a 2x improvement. So it's might have doubled the quality, which is still not terrible. But when it comes to the perspective of AI and its consistent upward trajectory and improvement levels that we've seen over the last six months, couple of years, I would have expected it to be substantially better. So here nor there, let me know your guys' thoughts. I would love to get your input and insights. Other than that, I mean, we'll keep playing with it. Um, and I'll try to think of some cool ways for you guys to be able to use it. But for now, if I could, I would totally go back to 4.0 and just use that. That's me.